Hey guys, and welcome back to the beginner's tutorial series to subdivision hard surface modeling in Blender. And today I'm going to step you through how to model this dice here. Uh, it might look a little bit complicated, a little bit daunting with all the circular uh, parts to it, but I promise we've got a fairly simple setup to get this up and going. Uh, and as always, you'll be able to find the reference images for this, uh, or actually more so in this case, it's a texture, uh, but in the resources section of my Discord server. So let's get right into this. So for once, we're not actually going to delete the default cube here. So I'm actually going to select it, control I to invert my selection and delete everything but the default cube. I know, very, very strange, right? Uh, what we're going to do is we'll go across to our shading tab here. And if you just want to bring across the uh, uh, image texture that I was talking about before, the dice texture, where do I have it? Here. So what I've done is I've set this up so that it will map automatically to the UVs of the default cube. And just down in our properties here for our viewport shading, uh, let's just change this color to texture. And now we'll be able to see the texture on this cube. So we'll just go ahead and we'll duplicate this cube here. Uh, so now we've got cube and cube 001. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove the material from our duplicate cube. So just to make it easier, I might actually just label these things. We'll go cube ref and we'll call this one like cube model. Cool, so let's tab into edit mode here. We'll select everything with A, and then we'll just come down to edge over here, and we want to subdivide the mesh once. So once we've subdivided it, let's use Control R to add in two loop cuts here, and then hold down Shift and Alt to select the other loop cut that we added in. We'll go S, X, so scale along the X, and then we'll go 1.116. I know that's very exact, <laughs> but I've just found that that's where uh, it sits best. Later on, you'll see what I'm talking about. And so we'll just do the same. So we'll just add in another two loop cuts using Control R, Shift Alt and Select, S, Z this time to scale along the Z axes, and 1.116. And then we just need a final set of loop cuts. So just Control R again, add that in, add that one in, Alt, Shift, and select the other loop. S, Y to scale along the Y, 1.116. So what that's given us is a vertex position that's in the middle of uh, all of these uh, counters on each face, or roughly in the middle. We could have just subdivided the whole thing twice and that would have given us a, like a grid shaped layout. I just don't personally like it. Uh, all of these look fairly square, they're fairly offset. Uh, I just think this looks a little bit nicer, but you're more than free to subdivide it uh, two or three times over instead if you would prefer. As I said, I just found this looks nicer. So once we've selected all of those verts, I'm just going to go 7 for a top-down orthographic view. And I'm going to press Control, Shift and B to do a bevel on vertexes. And I'm just going to bring this cube out just until the vertexes are touching the edge of the circular shape there. And then just scroll up on my scroll wheel once to add in a segment. I'll say enter. And if we just come down to this little panel over here, we're just going to change the shape to 0.1. And that roughly gives us a circular shape. Not perfect at the moment, but we can fix that up in a bit. So you, at the moment you can see we're getting all this Z fighting between the two cubes. So let's just go ahead and let's just hide the cube ref because we don't need that at the moment. Now, a lot of this tutorial is going to focus on uh, topology management, not so much the actual topology itself, but how we select specific parts of the topology uh, and isolate various areas. Um, because we could go ahead and manually select all of the uh, counters here, but that's going to take a lot of effort and it would be very repetitive and just get very monotonous and mundane very quick. So while we have all of this selected, what I want you to do is press Shift and H. Uh, that will just isolate our selections. And then let's just go ahead while in vertex select mode. Let's just select one of these middle vertices here, or vertexes. And we'll go Shift G to get select similar. And we'll go amount of connecting faces. So while we have these selected, let's just come over to our data panel over here. And we're just going to add in a vertex group. 
and we'll just go assign. You can leave it called group or call it something else if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it as group for simplicity. And you'll see why we have that later on. It's just going to help selecting things. Come over to our modifiers and we're going to add in a subdivision surface modifier. And this isn't too important at the moment. I'm just using this for a reference as we're going to use Alt and S to scale or shrink and flatten um, but push these vertices along their normal. So I'm going to pull this down. And I'm just using the subdivision surface here just so I can see what the curvature on the inside of the face counters looks like. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks good. So I'm just going to turn the display of the subdivision surface modifier off for now. And then just using Alt H, we can unhide uh, everything that we hid before. So coming back to our data panel here, let's go ahead and select these vertex groups. And then we'll use Control and Plus to increase our selection. And for the next step, I'm going to look down at the six-sided count, uh, as these ones are closer together and we want to make sure we don't get any overlapping uh, in these next few steps. So I'm going to press I to do an inset. And then I'm going to press O so that the inset goes on the outside to create a boundary loop. And just make sure these aren't overlapping. So that's overlapping there, and that's going to cause a whole lot of problems. And just make sure that they aren't touching, just like that. And I'll press I again, um, and we'll press O again, just so that we do an inset that goes inside of the circular shape there. And I'll just quickly explain why we're doing this. So what I'll do, this is just an example here. You don't need to copy what I'm doing. So we have two identical looking shapes here, uh, but with different topology. So that, that is the difference here. Shape-wise, these are the same. Topology is different, OK? And there's an important difference between these two. So this is what we have in our model at the moment, right, where we have this little support loop on the interior of our counter shape. Uh, and this is what we had before we did the inset, right? Now, you might look at this one and go, oh, well, you know, the one on the left there, that's better. It's more optimized because you've got less topology. Sure, yeah, optimized, definitely. Uh, is it going to resolve nicely when we do our subdivisions to it? Definitely not, no. And I'll show you why. So. I've got a crease just as we did on the uh, dice face on both of these. So I'm going to set these back to shade smooth and get a subdivision surface modifier and put them up to four for both of them. Now, this is very, very difficult to see. There is a discrepancy between these two. Uh, at the moment, they both look circular, right? They look fine. So keep in mind the, right, the one on the right here, right? This has a support loop on the inside, right? The one on the left here doesn't, and you can see the differences in the wireframe. But if I just drag this one over to the top, so I'll just do it exactly, I'll just bring this to X0. What you'll notice when we look at the wireframes here, right, I'm just going to full screen this, is the one that doesn't have the support loop, it's not perfectly circular, right? It may not look problematic, you know, next to each other like this. But it's not perfectly circular, and if we allowed this to be the case for all the counters on all the faces of the die, you would actually pick it up. And I know this because this is what I did on my first attempt of it, and it doesn't look right. It, everything looks circular, but something in your head goes, hey, this doesn't look right. So it's not perfectly circular. Whereas the one with the support loop on the inside, and the support loop doing what a support loop should do, is adding more support to the outer edge and bringing it out to be a circular shape. So I just wanted to explain why uh, we were adding that into the middle there, as although these look almost indistinguishable from one another, they are different, and that interior loop does serve a purpose. Anyway, um, back to the modeling. Let's go ahead and select our vertex group here. We'll just control plus twice, go shift H, and what we're going to use this for is to add some creasing uh, to retain our shape as we are going to apply a subdivision surface modifier here. Uh, so what I have noticed is that this is actually pulled through these edges in the middle here, which we don't want. So we'll just go through, we'll select those and hide those. And then we'll select our vertex group again. And we'll just go ahead and we'll hide in vertex select mode. We'll hide those vertices. So now we're just left with the outer two edges. We'll just select one of these edges here, Shift G, and we'll go length, 
and then H to hide them. And now we're just left with the outer two loops. So we're just going A to select everything, Shift E and 1. And that will make them a perfectly hard crease, uh, which we wouldn't normally do, but we're doing it in this instance because I want it to retain that shape after the subdivision surface. And then we'll do something similar here. We'll select one of these edges on the outside of the cube, Shift G. We'll go face angles. And now you'll notice that selected all these similar face angles on the outside of the cube. Shift E and one. Cool. So let's come back to our modifiers panel here. And let's just go ahead and apply this subdivision surface. And now you'll notice we've got nice circular cutouts on each of the faces to represent the counters. So, and it's also done a lot of the heavy lifting for us, right? I don't think this is the most optimal resolution of topology here. The reason I'm not too worried about it is that all of these are flat faces. So we could have n-gons or triangles or whatever. And for the most part, it would resolve just fine because these are flat faces. If it was a curved surface, it would be a different story and we can get to that later down the track in this series. Um, but for what it's worth, this is going to work fine because this is all quad based uh, topology here. It doesn't look particularly nice. We could spend a whole lot of time cleaning it up, um, but the amount of time we would spend cleaning up the topology versus the end result between this and a cleaned up version, uh, the difference would be negligible and it would just take more time. So I'm not going to bother about that today. Uh, but what we do want to do is we can do a little bit of optimization and clean up here. We've now got this interior edge here, which we don't need and it's a result of the subdivision, but it's not doing anything for us, right? It's not helping, it's just sort of in the way and it's adding more uh, edges and verts and faces to our overall model. So what we'll do, we'll come back to our data panel here and we'll select our vertex group. We'll go control plus three times to select all of these counters. And Shift H to isolate them. And what we want to do is, first and foremost, we want to figure out how to select all of these without doing it manually and dissolve them, get rid of them. So what we'll do, and we can actually do something in between times while we're doing this. So we'll select our vertex group. And with this selected, what I want you to do is we'll open up our end panel. We'll go to tool, sorry, edit. That's the second time I've done that. Uh, edit, loop tools, and let's go circle. Go control plus once. We'll go circle again, control plus twice and circle again. And that will just make, well, obviously, all of those edges more circular, just make everything look nicer. So let's select that vertex group again. Go, go control plus, go to vertex select mode, and then H to hide all of those. We'll go back to edge select mode. We'll select one of these creased edges, shift G, and we'll go crease. While we have all these creases selected, let's just go ahead, shift E and negative one to remove those creases. Go back to vertex select mode, H to hide. And then we're left with just all of these interior edges that we no longer want. So we can select them all, go back to edge select mode, and then using control and X, that will dissolve them. Now if we press Alt H, bring it back, you'll notice we've successfully gone ahead and removed all of those interior edges that we didn't need, uh, and just cleaned up the topology just a little bit and quote unquote optimized it just a bit. Cool. Now we can, drive this home. So let's just go ahead and let's get a nice bevel on these outer edges here. So we'll go Shift G and we will select the face angles again. Shift E and negative one to remove that crease. And to bring up our end panel, just go back to item. And let's bring our B, mean bevel weight up to one. Go to our modifiers and let's bring in a bevel modifier. I'm just gonna tab out of edit mode for a second just so I can go shade smooth. Uh, let's bring our segments up to four and let's change our limit method to weight so that we're using those weights that we just defined. And as I explained in the first episode, we have clamp overlap on, which is cool. So we just want to increase this amount just until you can sort of see that the clipping kicks in and it stops. So I'm going around 0.161 there. So there is a bit of a problem. And just to explain what's happening here, you can see these seams here, right? which is pretty undesirable, it doesn't look nice. A solution for this, and it's not a good solution at all, is we could just go ahead and we could chuck in a subdivision surface modifier, crank it up to four, you know, add more polys, and you know, all of a sudden it goes away. 
Problem is, it doesn't really go away, it's still there. And if you worked in a high poly to low poly workflow and you wanted to bake down a normal map, you would get a lot of errors and these would actually shine back through in your baked normal map. So the problem is, is that we actually have overlapping faces. You don't need to apply the bevel modifier there, by the way, this is just an example. So we have overlapping uh, vertices here, which we did cover in the uh, very first episode of all this. So if I just go select one of these, you can see, you know, we've got two vertices in the same position. So as we know, we could select everything. We could go mesh, merge, and then by distance. And then if we tab out of edit mode, it's all good, it's fine. The only problem with that is that, as I mentioned in the first tutorial, that would be considered destructive modeling, right? What if we wanted to go and change something, change the bevel, we can't do that anymore. So I'm just gonna undo everything I just did there. Come back to having the bevel. And what we're going to do is we're going to automate that dissolve by distance or overlapping vertices process. So what we'll do is we'll add a modifier and we're going to search for the weld modifier. Bring that in. And now you notice that's gone. So the weld modifier is pretty much doing that uh, dissolve overlap or, or merge uh, similar vert or overlapping verts. Um, and that's just doing that for us in a non-destructive manner. So with that, we can now put our subdivision surface back on just to have a high poly model. And personally, I'm not loving how creased these are. So I'm just gonna tab back into edit mode. I might just turn off the subdiv for a second to just not make it so intensive on my poor little laptop. And I'm just gonna select one of these creased edges, Shift G and go crease, Shift E negative one to remove the crease and then Shift E 0.55, uh, sorry, Shift E 0.33 will be better. And there we go, now we've got nice uh, soft edges on each of the face counters. And there we go, that's how we can make a dice in Blender with a subdivision hard surface modeling workflow in mind. And if there's anything else, any specific models that you'd like to see made for this series, please let me know down in the comments or over in my Discord, and I will do my best to integrate them into the series so that you can learn how to model something that you're interested in.